I, uh, I've always had a screw loose. I don't know. It was like from the start, whether it was a trampoline, we didn't just jump on the trampoline, we went to the second floor of our house and jumped off into the trampoline, like put pillows around it. It's just like, it's just how I am. Tyler Turner's compulsion to push boundaries as he does as a skydiver. And a snowboard. Is something that is hardwired into his DNA. Tyler knows what he is and so do the people who know him best. I would describe Tyler as an adrenaline junkie for sure. Yeah, uh, that's like pre-accident, post-accident. I would say he gets a dose of adrenaline on the daily, wherever he can get it from, for sure. Tyler is for sure, um, if you want to call it an adrenaline junkie, he is. Yeah, Tyler's definitely an adrenaline junkie. Well, I think when I first met, I, we first met, I called him that and what's he call himself? He's an adrenaline enthusiast or something. He has some other term for it. <laughs> uh, adrenaline junkies are hooked. They can't quit. I could quit tomorrow. And that's a lie. <laughs> so will you quit tomorrow? Absolutely not. No, no, no. No, no I, uh, I mean, I lost two legs in an accident and um, my first thing I did, I think it might've been the first thing I did outside of like wheelchair sports was Back to skydiving. Just, I, I love it and uh, I don't blame it for anything. I, it's given me more than it's taken. The accident Tyler is referring to happened in 2017 while he was working as a skydiving instructor on Vancouver Island. Get out of the airplane, filming a tandem, doing their first tandem skydive. Great skydive, everything went awesome. Started flying home and then I shut the GoPro off and like, might just be poetic, but that's kind of where my memory ends, too. Um, somewhere around that time. Uh, from there, I don't remember what happened with the accident, uh, and I don't remember the next uh, almost two months. Even that first year is really foggy. What was pieced together is that despite his chute opening, Tyler landed hard, causing extensive injuries. He spent most of the first year in hospital, had both his legs amputated, and underwent a lengthy rehabilitation process supported by his family. He also built on an already budding relationship with Kayleen Vanderree. We met about three months before his accident um, on Tinder. <laughs> and he was kind of all over the place, though. He was living between Revelstoke, Calgary, Victoria, Tofino. And <laughs> I was like, who is this guy? He's just everywhere and everything excited him and it was a lot of fun um, and then a couple months later his accident kind of just totally changed everything but we still had fun just like talking of all the things we wanted to do in the hospital room for three months one of the things tyler told kayleen and others he wanted to do was get back in the air as soon as possible after a few months the skydivers were like oh yeah he's gonna skydive again whereas the non skydivers are like, why do? Why you gotta do this? It's like, I have to. It's just, I had an accident, you know, you, you get in a car accident, you don't stop driving. As soon as you can drive again, you gotta get in your car and go, and you don't even think about it. Well, sure to most people, skydiving is this absolutely insane, extreme thing. And there's some risk involved, for sure. But um, yeah, to me, it was, there was no question. If I didn't skydive again, I, I was in trouble. There was another sport Tyler felt he had to get back to for his mental well-being. First time snowboarding was amazing, but it was the sport that took the longest to get into. And that was um, by design because I knew sitting in the ho hospital room that uh, it was gonna be the trickiest due to the impacts of the sport and just, just what it required of my body. And at that point, especially with pelvis, back, along with double amputated legs it just like it was so far in the future also it's snowboarding is my life like it's the biggest thing for me so i wanted to make sure i didn't get into it too quick and i knew it was the biggest potential for letdown if that makes any sense um i really needed to snowboard again so that's exactly what he did i stand up hold his hand right away i'm like and I go like, dude, I'm good. 
I'm good. Literally, the board points downhill. I'm wide open, like wide open riding, feeling comfortable riding well in extreme pain, like unexplainable pain, but like ripping my first time. We got, I don't know, down three pitches the hill, pulled over and I'm screaming in pain, but also screaming in excitement because I'm like, I know this will go. There's just a lot of factors I have to figure out first. And go it did. Though at first, Tyler was not thinking of a career in Paris snowboard cross. He was just happy to have the sport and its community back in his life. In 2020, that changed. After a few conversations with Canada Snowboard, Tyler was invited to see what the Paralympic sport had to offer. That first camp, uh, I got to ride snowboard cross and it was jumps, speed, berms, excitement, like, uh, it was racing, it was fast, it was adrenaline, and I was like, oh, I love it. This is wicked. So I was all in from that first camp, pretty much. That's what it took to get me hooked. Working with Tyler, like, he's honestly one of our easiest athletes in many ways to work with. He came to para sport already as pretty much a pro snowboarder from the past. Um, his brain knew exactly what to do. He just had to adapt to new legs. As Mark Fawcett, technical coach for Canada Snowboard points out, Tyler demonstrated the essential skills for success in the sport right from the start. But Mark also noticed another characteristic in Tyler when he first joined the team. Tyler definitely gets pulled in a lot of different directions with his emotions and his focus. Um, the skydiving, the surfing. He gets a little bit of FOMO sometimes if, he, if a friend has like, had a really good surf day and yet we're on snow. But he's matured past that a little bit now and he knows, you know, I think first and foremost, he's a professional snowboarder. Like that's his number one sport. And he schedules himself uh, with his other sports around snowboarding. Uh, at first, that was definitely difficult. Any of us action sporters, most of us with some level of ADHD, we get FOMO super bad and he's not immune to that. Tyler's partner Kayleen remembers the switch well. It was really cool seeing that transition of him like, oh I don't even know if I want to race, to all of a sudden just like charging down the hill, just coming out of nowhere for the rest of the competitors. So. It's, it's really neat to see him have a passion and be good at it too. Good is an understatement. Less than a year after his first camp invite, Tyler established himself as one of the best with three medals at the 2021 World Para Snow Sports Championships. He's hyper-focused. He has no focus on consequences, which is really good. <laughs> he focuses on that task at hand and he has uh, an ability to enter the flow state quite well. Um, Canada Snowboard's been amazing. Took me in with open arms and I mean, I got to progress quickly with them and, and they've supported me like crazy. To be able to get involved with that program and people that had a good knowledge of prosthetics and how they work, snowboarding, I was able to take like this mishmash of parts that I'd put together and be like, this is what I'm snowboarding on. And they're like, nope, no, no, no. Let's get you sorted, let's get you on the right stuff, let's get you set up the right way um, because they had that knowledge and that experience. So it was just really exciting to be able to like know that they were gonna help me get to that next level, like help me, help me just climb that ladder up to World Cup level and then supported me with World Cup racing and just getting me to where I wanted to be. I'm lucky to have Kindred Snowboards. Um, Evan and I have been good friends growing up and we've done all sorts of wild stuff, competed snowboarding growing up. And then it just you know, happens that he starts a snowboard company where he builds custom snowboards. Evan Fair and his wife Angie Farkasin established Kindred Snowboards in their converted garage shop in the Comox Valley in 2013. For the most part, the couple splits the workload. Evan handles the construction Angie handles the art design. The tree. Yes, it's cool. Because I drew that 
that. I still have it in oh, my good. sketchbook. Together, they give Tyler an edge on the mountain. To go grab a standard race board for able body, flex might be wrong, side cuts might be wrong, every, you know, the whole thing. What I'm able to do with Ev is talk about like what boards are, how boards are feeling, and and then build one, go test it, and say, mm, you know what? What if we did this? Ev's gonna build another one. It's so incredible. Like that support is um, unprecedented, without a doubt. Uh, side of the core down. Yeah, or you're just. Yeah, so Ty's intensity is met with enthusiasm in Evan. They do get into the nitty gritty. He brings videos, he'll videotape runs, and they sit on the couch or they'll put it up on the television and like nitpick his stance or any coach feedback that they've had um, about the way that the boards are performing under him. And then we just build what he needs. What I have with Kindred is, is kind of one of a kind with just how close our relationship is, how close we are in proximity, and my ability to come over, walk in the shop here, and and say, nah, that board didn't work, and uh, for Evan Ange to step up and just, let's let's do another one, let's change it, is so incredible. That's next year's potential race board. <laughs> the couple support doesn't stop with the boards. Tyler is quick to point out that the duo has been there for him in so many ways including a place to stay whenever needed. They even hosted a watch party for Tyler's golden moment at the Beijing Paralympics in 2022. Here we go, keep your eye on Tyler Turner in red for Team Canada. I, I don't want to sound crazy, but I was like, he's gonna have, a, he's gonna get a medal. It'll probably be a gold. And there was kind of no question in her mind that, cause he's so driven, um, and we knew that he had the ability to do so. He'd been doing really well all season, right? He got the Crystal Globe, he'd won a whole bunch of world championships. So um, it felt very possible. It, it didn't feel like we were living in dreamland. It felt like, you know, if he does everything he's capable of, then he's gonna take it home. Tyler Turner, no one's challenging him for the number one spot. I came out of turn four and I never really looked back. I'm always just go, go, go. But I. I had troubles in that last section, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna see if I have some space and I can relax. I look back, they're like, I mean, I'm three seconds ahead of them, which is an eternity. And I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna win. And my knees went jello. And the last berm and the final rhythm section, you can see me catch an edge, and I'm having this internal like, don't fall, don't give it away. This is like, you'll never sleep again. And uh, so that was amazing. To come across the line, it was just like, oh. I knew I could win that medal, and it was just relief. Tyler Turner, landing gear down, he grabs the gold. It was just such an electric moment, and of course I was crying and whatever, but the funny part, it just, we just knew it would open so many doors for him in so many ways. It meant that um, we could go on this big sailboat trip together in a, in a way that we actually wanted to do it and it meant that he could keep going in the snowboard world and he wants to do speaking so it was really neat to you're not only watching him get the medal but all of a sudden you see his whole like world open up in in a different way as well he fancies a place on the podium what can the do? gold tyler won wasn't the only hardware he captured in beijing he also earned bronze in the paris snowboard bank slalom event further solidifying his place on top of the mountain. He moves into the bronze medal situation with a 112.84 for Canada's Tyler Turner. And the medal hall definitely has opened the doors Kayleen mentioned. The couple spent seven months sailing and surfing along the Pacific coast down to Mexico, sharing it all in their sailing vlog. What are you most excited for? Being alive. They covered 3,000 nautical miles on the ocean but have recently set anchor back in the Comox Valley, where they purchased a new trailer to call home. Kayleen is originally from the area, and Tyler has developed roots of his own, like his friends at the Campbell River Skydive Center. Working at the center allows Tyler to jump as much as possible, something he was doing with two friends when we visited. After watching Tyler and the others jump, I was tempted to try myself. So I suited up and put on a parachute. 
But I still had a few questions for Tyler on the tarmac before we hit the sky. Like I just watched you do it. I could hear you laughing, coming down, <laughs> flipping, all that stuff. Tell me, what's it feel like when you're just about to take off from the plane? Oh, leaving the plane is so much fun. It's uh, my favorite part of watching people do this too. Uh, the, that like fear to like we're doing it kind of thing as you leave the plane is incredible. Um, yeah, today was great. I haven't been jumping all winter, so uh, it was actually, you know, the excitement can kind of fade off a little bit sometimes. It becomes a job. But today, the excitement was there. I love jumping with my friends that I jumped with today. And uh, so it was really good to get back. Um, spring, start off the season. Like, that's a good start to the season right there. We talk so much about, like, your community and like, just meeting your people this mm -hmm. week has been amazing. Yeah. And even today, it was just, like, seeing you guys interact in the air and stuff. It's like, I get it a bit more now. Mm -hmm. and, 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 like, it's just a blast. Yeah, it was awesome that we got to, like, see so many different parts of it, too. The snowboard community and uh, the skydive community, you know. Uh, it's great that we got to kind of run around and meet a lot of those people. And, and you got to really see it. And, uh, like, we went all in in the last couple of days yeah, of, yeah, like, yeah. this is it. This is my world. And, uh, yeah, it was really fun. You told me you're a great salesman. Yeah. So for all the people who are going to be watching this and they're thinking, should I ever skydive? What do yeah. you say to those people? Dude, everyone's got to try it once. It's the best. I say it to everyone, everyone's got to try it once. Come out. You won't regret it. It's an amazing experience. With Tyler's sales pitch fresh in my mind, I ran through my pre-dive training. Put your hands just to be out. And once you feel me, tap, 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 you can put your arms out and you can fly. Unfortunately, the wind picked up and the center was forced to call off all jumps. I just wish we could have got you up there, uh, man. You know, but you know what? I'll come back. We will get me out. We so got to do it. Don't worry about that. Tyler, on the other hand, won't be deterred by a little stormy weather. He's faced his fair share. But the 34-year-old has demonstrated he'll keep pushing through. He's also ready to fight for his position on top of the Paris Snowboard Cross World as long as he can. I've uh, ridden this ride pretty hard, this ride of uh, life, uh, and I'm paying for it for sure. So snowboarding, I don't know how long my body can keep up with the rigors of that, but starting to push myself again because I have the target on my back now. Um, everyone's coming after me. I was just a nobody the last couple seasons. This random guy that came out of Canada that we'd never heard about. Now it's, uh, you know, world champs, Paralympics, and then defending the world championships with another gold this year. Everyone wants to beat me. Um, I'm the motivation for them to push harder because they want to knock me off that pedestal. And so I need to push myself as well.